This is day five of making a cyclono drive for my robotic arm. And the parts to my first stage drinker are finally done. Naturally, as a large pro with multiple overhangs, there was a lot of support filament to remove, and this was no easy task. This is what happens when you offset a whole entire surface like this off the pimple. You get a whole lot of support, not a very good surface. Although I guess I could adjust the Z offset, but I'm too lazy for that. After spending nearly two hours, I had most of the support filament removed. While taking these supports out, however, I realized that I could have saved myself a lot of work if I simply removed these overhangs, as they really didn't serve any purpose and were just getting in the way. After this, I then placed the bearings into their respective slots. Now you might be wondering, why do I need all these bearings? It seems kind of excessive, right? And yeah, it is. But here's the problem. This specific design of the cyclotal drive, as far as I know, is untraditional, one reason being its style of output. The typical cyclotal drive has its output driven by an inner disc and usually has a center rotating shaft that is used to power an external object. In this design, however, the output is from the outer gear rather than the inner disc, which actually serves as a coupler between the two stages in this design. Now, this is just a simple comparison between these two designs, but I'll explain this more in a future video. And so to answer the question, since the output is from this large second stage gear, it ideally would need to be as stable and level as possible. In a perfect world, simply being attached to the center shaft would accomplish this, but things like tolerances and stress on the material could prevent this from happening. Now, normally, people would use a large ball bearing to center this ring gear on the first stage ring gear but a bearing of that size cost a bit too much. So instead, I decided it would be best to simulate a large bearing by using multiple smaller bearings, leading to all these horizontal slots in a first stage ring gear. I also added slots for vertically oriented bearings to make sure that the second stage ring gear was level. So anyways, back to the building. With all the bearings mounted, I could finally move on to screwing the two halves together. Using M3 screws and some threaded inserts that I heat set earlier, the two halves finally became one. From the M3 screws alone, the parts were able to hold together pretty nicely, meaning that it was more than capable enough to stay together, as the screws for the disc bearings had yet to be screwed in. With this done, I was finally able to test how well they fit each other, and I was a little bit disappointed when I found that they didn't fit as easy as I was hoping for it to be. I suspected that this is due to uneven surfaces, specifically from the large area that was printed on top of the support material. So, this will be a problem that I will have to fix properly. And so, our problem that I have to fix properly is a problem for later, so stay tuned for the update.